Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to look at some smaller snare drums. I've had some requests for this. In my uh, snare drum videos that I've done, uh, one on orchestra snare drums and one on drum set snare drums, we talked about several of these drums. Not all of them, though, and I did not play them all for you, and I'm going to do that today as well uh, after we do this introduction of the drums. So I picked out six of these snare drums that I use, some a lot, some not as much. I do have more of these, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but I do enjoy the different sounds they create. And these are all different sizes, every single one of them. Uh, they range from 12 inch in diameter to uh, literally eight inches in diameter, the small snare drums that I own. Uh, these today, we're gonna uh, actually measure them in front of you just to make sure I get all my facts right so we know what we're talking about. It gets a little confusing when you talk about drums this small, but again, these are all a little different. So we'll go over each one, and then I'll talk about how I mount them, and then we'll go over to the drum set, and I'll play them all for you. So this first one here, this is a Tama Star Classic from the 90s, and this is a maple drum. Most of these snare drums are maple, except for this brass a &F drum. And this particular drum is, let's see, five inches deep by 12 inches in diameter. Nothing much special about this. It's a very good sounding drum. All these star classics were. It does have reinforcing rings on here, uh, which is, well, not all the Tama drums from that era had them, but a really good sounding drum, and you'll hear that. And let's put this aside. And then we have this Grover maple drum. This is thin, no reinforcing rings. It's probably five plies. And this is also from the late 90s. And you'll see this drum actually has a mount, as some of these do as well. Now we'll measure this one. And this is going to be a 10 inch by four and a half inch drum. Okay. It's got kind of a transparent black finish, similar to the Yamahas, the Maple Customs from the same era. So it actually matches that drum set. I have one here. I can show you. This is the Yamaha Transparent Black Tom. Great drums, as all of you know. These are amazing drums. And this is the Grover, so very, very similar. All right. So that's that drum. Now here we have a Gretsch Catalina Elite, also from the 1990s. And this is a set of drums I recently got for next to nothing. I cleaned them up. They were kind of a mess. And I've been playing these for you on some of the videos. I really love the way they sound. It's this cheap Philippine mahogany. And for some reason, these drums have a really great sound. Uh, some of the sonar drums, too, that are um, similar, you know, in the cheapness of them, sound great. So I'd recommend both. And um, this drum is 12 inches once again, and now the diameter is 4 inches. I mean, the depth is 4 inches. Now, this drum has a little bit of a throw-off issue. I'm about to address that. I'm going to fix this. It's very stiff, very cheap throw-off, so I may change it out. All right. Next, we have this pork pie. And... This drum is finished in this green, kind of Kermit the Frog green. I have a whole kit like this, which I love. This drum, I didn't come with the kit. I got it later. And they call this a little squealer, <laughs> which I always thought was funny. And it's got, again, that mounting on there. And I'll show you how to do this in a minute, most of you know. It's got the rims mount system on it. And this drum is... We'll have to find a spot here. This is a five and a half by 10 inch drum. Now, none of these drums are expensive except for 
this a and f and if you could find one these yamaha cocktail drums which we'll go over in a minute so that's that drum and again this is maple another probably a five ply shell maybe seven very thin and then we have this like i said this cocktail drum yamaha this is probably uh, also maybe from the late 80s uh, early 90s and tiny tiny little drum it's an eight inch drum so eight inches in diameter and the depth is four and a half and it's got that yamaha mounting system that all of you know from the toms it's a cool little drum it's easy to miss because it's so small so <laughs> when you're playing and this was the um i believe the steve jordan club kit little cocktail set all right. Finally, we have this ANF Rude Boy drum. I showed you this in a video I did recently featuring a few of their more obscure sizes. And this drum is a 10 by 3 and I'd say 10 by 3. Okay. This drum is heavy for its size. It's about 9 pounds. And again, I showed you that other video. Um, I featured this drum in it, so you may want to look back at that, but I'll play it again for you today. And this is brass, raw brass. All right, so those are the sizes of the drums we're going to show you when we play. Now let's talk a little bit about mounting. Some of these drums will fit, most of them will fit on a stand if you have the right stand. I have several of these. This is, I believe, a pearl top cheap stand. The good thing about this one, the basket closes way up. You can easily fit an eight inch drum on here. So I love these. I bought a bunch of these because not all the baskets on these stands will close up like that. So I bought three or four of them so I'd have them. Sometimes I do stuff with the symphony where we have to use really small drums, you know, if we're doing a movie score or something. And it's hard to find stands that will close this much. So that's what I recommend. And I won't be using that for all the drums, but definitely for the 10-inch drums and the 12-inch drums, I'll be using this. A few of the others have, like I said, mounting devices, so we'll be using those too. Now, for those drums that you don't want to put in a basket because you think it's going to kill the sound of them, and it does affect it a little, but with a drum this small, it's negligible. You know, you're not going to lose too much of it. I do use this LP claw device. I showed you this on this on the video where I did the ANF drums. And basically, you can put it on the bottom rim, tighten it up. It's not going to hurt the drum. It's very stable. And then tighten that up and then use it like that. Okay? Now, this is a really heavy drum, so, you know, I probably wouldn't do that. I think over time it could bend the rim, but I haven't had that happen when I've used it. So that's one way to do it. Although today we're going to be using it on a snare drum stand. So it's a cheap way to mount these. It's cheaper than buying a rims mount or anything. You can get these things for about 15 bucks used. Okay, so again, it's the LP claw mount. That's what it looks like. They made these for mounting microphones and other things, cowbells and whatnot, on kungas and, and also toms. All right, so that's it. And we'll go over to the drum set now. And I'll play these drums one at a time. And um, I'm excited to hear what it sounds like, the difference. I have a feeling several of them will be pretty close. When you get a drum this small, there's not that much difference. But uh, the difference will be in the snare response and the tom response when we turn the snares off. They're all very timbali-like. So we'll see in a minute. Okay, so we're here at the drums now. Uh, this is the kit I've been using for a few of my videos recently. This is a very inexpensive, old, from the 90s, Gretsch Catalina Elite with a 16-inch bass drum, a 12-inch tom, a 14-inch floor tom, and of course all these snares we'll be using. Cymbals, quickly, we're using a dark flat ride here, a 16-inch, kind of an obscure cymbal. We're using an 18-inch Peisty flat ride. This is a Peisty also. And we're using this Zildjian Remix 18-inch cymbal here, sort of a ride crash cymbal, crash ride cymbal. And finally, my little tiny Peisty hi-hats here. So all this stuff 
is geared towards towards um, small drums, small cymbal, small drums, even soft playing, as well as these hi hats. This, these are 12, uh, 12 inch remix hi hats. Uh, I'm not sure if these Zildjian remix cymbals are made anymore, but I'm sure you all know if they are. So we'll start out here with the Tama Star Classic drum. This is a 12 inch drum. We'll go large, small for this video. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a few different tunings. I have this tuned pretty high right now, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to take it down real quick. And we'll play a little with it down and then we'll tune it up. But I just have to tell you, normally most of these drums, these snares, I use, I tune them pretty high because that's the reason I'm using them. I want that kind of effect. So we'll play several different styles in these quick little demos. We'll go from jazz to, uh, to you know, some funk, maybe a little bit of Latin music here too. All right. So you hear it's, it cuts through quite a bit. It's got a nice ring to it. Now let's tune it up where I normally use it and put a little bit of muffling on it, just a little. Now I like these mufflers because when you hit the drum they actually pop up so they're not uh, staying on the drum like a lot of these mufflers do. Now I'll do the same thing a little bit without the muffling.
So a lot of times with these small drums, you're going to be playing a lot of rim shots, and that's what will cause the most ring. And if that's a problem in the mix, you may want to use a little bit of muffling. Finally, we'll play the drum with the snares off. This is a drum I have used as a main snare drum, especially for playing different kinds of Afro-Cuban music. So it's a viable choice. It is a 12-inch um, drum, so it's got some size to it. And you can play brushes on it if you have to. It's not my preferred size, but it doesn't sound too bad. You just kind of run out of real estate and it doesn't feel that comfortable. So those extra uh, inches on the 14-inch uh, drum make a big difference. All right, so we're going to spend a little more time on these larger snare drums because I use these more and I think you would get more use out of them as well. So next we have this Gretsch drum and you've heard this before. This is a drum I've been using with this kit since it's part of it, and it's got a great sound. I think this Philippian mahogany, this cheap wood gives it kind of a characteristic kind of sound. And we're gonna just tilt this just a hair, not too much. All right, and I have this tuned up for the videos that I've been doing. I have a fiber skin head on this one. Most of the others, others I just have Remo ambassadors. And once again, this strainer is a problem. And we're going to address that in a separate video. But uh, I'll just play for you in the, with the tuning that I've been using with it. So this tuning is a low tuning right now. We'll, we'll start low uh, without any muffling and then we'll bring it up and put a little muffling on there. Once again, I'm hitting pretty hard. This is how I would use these if I was doing, you know, sort of an aggressive kind of solo or session or whatever. So uh, you're hearing these at that volume. If I play a little lighter, it would sound like this. sort of a backbeat thing, okay? So this is a really interesting sounding snare drum. It's almost trashy sounding at this low tuning. Now when we bring it up, let's see if I can find my key. And we'll just take it up. I usually do about a half a turn all the way around. And we won't put muffling on it right away. But we'll have it handy.
Now let's put a little bit of muffling on there and you'll see a huge difference in that. I really like this drum a lot. So normally between the 12 inch drums that I own, and I own many of these, these two, this Tama and this cheap Catalina snare drum are my favorites. So we'll uh, stop the tape here and we'll skip to the 10 inch drums and I'll show you what they sound like. So next up we have this Grover 10 inch drum. And like I said, I am mounting this with the included mounting bracket here. Now the problem with these mounting brackets is they would tend to move. Of course, a lot of these snare drums are, being, are, are meant to be mounted to the side of you, to the left or somewhere on the kit. So you use it as an extra snare, like a popcorn snare or whatever you might want to call it. Um, so a lot of times you can mount it right here to your left like this and the bracket works well. But again, the bracket's going to move and the snare drum's going to jump up and down. It does sound a little bit better than putting it in the snare basket, especially on these little drums, uh, because they don't bring much to begin with. So let, let's play this drum for you. So not a lot of sound, obviously, out of a, uh, a small 10-inch drum, and I'm, I'm hitting it hard. So uh, basically, these are special effects drums. No way could they be a main snare drum. But <laughs> if you were miking every drum individ individually, and I'm not doing that, I just have two overheads and a bass drum mic for all these videos. If you were doing that, you could get the mic in there pretty close and get sort of that almost gunshot kind of sound, that really high-pitched thing. So for a special effects drum, that would be fine. And I have used this on tracks to get that sound. But normally, like I said, it's mounted to my left. So that's the Grover 10-inch drum. Let's change this out. And let's try the Pork Pie 10-inch. I already showed you this over there. This drum's heavier, so let's see if it bends this rod a little. And this has the rims mounting system on it. So this may be a little better. No, it's probably worse. <laughs> so this tends to move. And some of these rods for the brackets aren't 
it's not the same thickness, so this may end up leaving a little on me. Very, very, very similar to that Grover. That's what I hear anyway. I'll know more when I put the, um, the actual recording on. Let's tighten this up just a little. This one's heavy, so it's wanting to move. I'll play it. Hopefully it won't move too much. This strobe feels a little bit choked to me, so I'm going to loosen the snares. Not much of a difference there. And we'll turn the snares off. Now, if I was using this drum regularly, I'd probably take this rim mount off and just put it in the stand because it's very, very cumbersome the way that works. It's um, just bouncing all over, as you can see. So the verdict is with this, I would get rid of the rim system. It's kind of clunky anyway. And either put that um, LP claw on there, like I showed you earlier on the rim, and mount it like that, which is stable or I would um, just use that Grover drum, which sounds very, very similar. So that's the Pork Pie 10-inch Wolf Squealer. Now, um, before we go on, I am going to, actually, we're gonna go on, <laughs> and I'm gonna move this. And I, I, I put this a &F drum on a stand for you. Okay, so, this drum is heavy, so you don't want to have it like that. It's gonna, it would move all over the place. And once again, a smaller depth, three inch drum. definitely has a different sound to it. We're going to tighten up the snares just a little. They're super loose. The strainers on these things are not great. They're a little cumbersome the way they work if you've ever checked one out. And no matter what you do on one of these drums a lot of times the snares don't sit perfectly on that head so you can't really get it tightened up. I've tried everything. Uh, but it is a sound having the snares loose like that. Now 
Now this is the low, the low tuning, which is pretty funny. And we're going to bring it up just a little. And I'll show you the high tuning of it. You could really crank this thing up. Once again, you don't want to use any muffling for these little drums because they don't really need it. One of the things about these drums, they have the straight rims, so doing a rim shot is a little bit different than what you used to. So you've got to kind of have to practice doing that. It's just a little bit different with the distance between the top of the rim and the drum. So they're straight, and they will kind of mess up your sticks. Not that you care if you have a bunch of sticks, but... It could be a problem. So I like this drum. It's very, very unique sounding. Of course, you heard it on that uh, ANF video. It also sounds good playing it softly. Again, I'm playing pretty hard today, but uh, just soft stuff. It's almost like a little tambourine, you know, a little Brazilian drum. It's got a cool sound and a cool feel. Now finally we have this little itty bitty <laughs> shrunken Yamaha drum and I'm going to put this on a stand to show you exactly how small this stand can get which is pretty remarkable really and you can fit this 8 inch drum on a basket stand so that's why I like these basket stands I told you about. And I prefer this method, like I said earlier, to the, uh, to the mount that's on it. So I've never seen a 6-inch snare drum, but this is the smallest drum that I have, that I own. It's kind of fun to play on. almost a kind of like a little marching drum. <laughs> now as far as being accurate with it, you gotta really aim well. So uh, on a drum like this, you want to actually, I had the snares pretty tight there. If you loosen up the snares and actually tune the drum down, it does sound better. So you see there, the snares are loose. And as you loosen them even more, it actually opens up because the pressure of the snares on a drum this small actually muffles the drum, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Now, I have tuned this drum way up in the past just for a really cool sound. And I can put this, I have a few of these, and I've put them on different spots of the kit, 
I'm just hitting random sources sounds great. This is a fun drum. Sometimes I just put it up there and just play for an hour or so. Just, I don't know, for something different. So this is something worth having. I actually prefer this, believe it or not, over the 10-inch drums that I own, except for that a and F, which is very unique. So the verdict for me is the 12-inch drums are great. Uh, the ones that I own, all of them sound really good and different, especially the ones I showed you, the Gretsch and the Tama are very different. They really complement each other. The 10 inch drums uh, are okay, the wood drums. I really prefer the metal 10 inch drums, like the A and F. I have a, uh, a Slingerland, an old Slingerland brass that I like that's very small. And this drum, I consider a total special effects drum, this little Steve Jordan uh, cocktail kit drum. I don't know if you can get these uh, any other companies make them this small anymore. But you can probably find one used. And this is just a really fun drum. I've actually used it with the orchestra as a special effect thing when they say a toy snare drum or something. We, we've used it. So I hope this was enjoyable. I can't wait to listen to see what these sound like. Maybe this video will never get published because <laughs> they sound bad. But, um, but I think using this little kit that sounds a little unique with the weird symbols actually helps these. When you use it on a conventional kit, it's a little off-putting because everything sounds so normal. And then you're throwing the snare drum into the mix. It's like, that's very strange. But when you use it on a kit like this with weird sizes, it, it really, I think, adds a lot and it has a personality. So uh, we'll see you next time. And thanks so much for watching.